Welcome, fellow pilgrims, to our We Are Saintly YouTube channel as we embark on this sacred journey about praying for future husband today. I'm Priscilla, and I invite you to join me on an extraordinary pilgrimage where we explore the rich traditions and spiritual treasures of the Catholic faith. In this sacred space, we delve into the depths of devotion, faith, and the power of prayer with a special focus on learning all about praying for future husband. This channel is all about teaching you about the holy saints so that you can deepen your faith. I also help you plan your Catholic pilgrimages to visit these incredible saints and bring your faith to the next level, so make sure to check out the links in the description for help with cheap flights, car rentals, travel insurance, and more. This channel is about fostering a deeper understanding of our faith, embracing the teachings of Christ, and discovering the beauty of Catholic traditions. Today, we'll explore the exciting graces contained with praying for future husband and apply these lessons to our everyday lives. Together, we'll cultivate a space of spiritual growth where we can learn from one another, uplift each other, and find self us in praying for future husband and our shared Catholic heritage. So, whether you're a seasoned devotee or just beginning your journey of faith, this channel is for you. Let's unite as a community of prayerful souls embarking on this divine pilgrimage of the heart. Join me on this journey today about praying for future husband, where prayer becomes a transformative force and our souls find sanctuary. Take a moment now to subscribe to our channel because we have more awesome videos coming up and hit the notification bell to be a part of our sacred journey. Let's get started. Seeking a husband can feel like you need a miracle. I remember praying for future husband. We all long for love and companionship for the journey ahead. But rather than trying to control when or how God will answer your prayers when praying for future husband, the healthiest posture is one of openness. Releasing the tight grip on my own romantic timeline freed me to experience God's will for my life. Instead, I rested in the knowledge that God saw my deepest desires and he would provide the perfect man for me to spend my life with that would glorify his kingdom the most during my time here on earth. Those seasons of waiting and seeking are often difficult, they are not empty or pointless with the Lord. God uses these times to prepare us for what He has in store ahead. As I walk this road that the Lord has placed me on, I feel more security that I'm walking on the right path because it's what God chose for me and not necessarily just my wants and choices. If you want to become the woman of faith and character that God desires you to be, be still and know that He is God and that His eye is on you always. Take this time to grow closer to Him as your first love. The days ahead may be unpredictable, but you can trust His purpose in this process. What is the best prayer to get a husband? Finding a husband can feel like a miracle for many women who desire marriage. Though we know God has a plan for each of us, waiting and praying for the right spouse can be challenging. One of the best prayers to get a husband is to sincerely ask God to send the right man into your life in his perfect timing. We can trust that God knows our deepest desires and wants the very best for us. Jeremiah 29, 11. Ask him to prepare your heart for marriage and also prepare a godly spouse for you. Pray for God's will to be done in your life and for him to give you clarity, wisdom, and discernment in relationships. Ask him to guide you to recognize the man he has for you when the time is right. Be open and surrender to how God will answer you when you when you are praying for future husband. He may bring someone along suddenly or take time to gradually join you together. But with an open heart and spirit of trust, keep asking and seeking God for your husband according to his perfect will. What prayer will help me find my husband quickly? Longing for a husband is a natural desire, but finding the right spouse is more important than speed. I know the wait can feel long and difficult at times. The best prayer for a swift arrival of your husband is to first ask God to develop your trust and patience. Pray for release from timelines and a willingness to allow God to introduce your spouse in his timing. Ask him for strength to rest in his sovereignty rather than striving to make something happen quickly. God may have key things to show you or develop in you before your husband arrives. As you surrender your heart to him each day, keep praying for future husband by asking for God's help to be ready when he does bring the right man along. Ask for eyes to see clearly and discernment to recognize God's leading. Pray for the one you will marry that God is preparing his heart to. Trust that God is able to bring a husband quickly when the time is truly right. Continue to delight yourself in him as you wait. What is a good prayer for finding a godly husband? Finding a godly husband begins with becoming a godly wife. As you seek the Lord in prayer about your future spouse, also ask him to prepare your own heart and character. Pray for the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Galatians 5 23 Ask God to purify your motivations for wanting a husband, that your supreme desire would be living for Jesus above all else. Pray to grow in wisdom, discernment, biblical femininity, 
femininity and devotion to Christ. Ask God to help you become a prayerful, gentle, servant-hearted woman who loves the Lord with all your heart. As you grow closer to Jesus, pray for a man with these same godly qualities who is passionate about knowing the Lord. Ask God to lead such a man into your life in his perfect timing. Continue praying for future husband, believing God will answer according to his good purposes. Look for a spouse who pursues Christ above all else. What prayer will make my future husband come to me? Rather than seeking to control or conjure your future husband, the best prayer is to ask God to orchestrate your love story according to his will. Begin by surrendering your desires and timeline to the Lord. Pray for the patience to wait on God's timing and trust his plans for you. Ask him to prepare your heart to become a godly wife and to also prepare your future husband's heart too. Pray for clarity so you can recognize God's leading and discern his direction. Ask for eyes to see the right man when God does choose to introduce him into your life. Continue to delight yourself in the Lord and seek his kingdom above all else, believing he will give you the desires of your heart when the time is right. Psalm 37 to 4 minus 5 allow God to write your unique love story with its ups and downs, twists and turns. Keep praying for future husband, trusting God knows what is best and he loves you perfectly. Remain open and surrender to how and when God will orchestrate your introduction to your spouse according to his sovereign wisdom and grace. What are things I can do to prepare to become a good wife? As you pray for your future husband, also spend time preparing your heart and life to become a godly wife. First, commit to pursuing an intimate relationship with Jesus through prayer, Bible study, and involvement in church. Your spiritual walk comes before everything, including marriage. Ask experienced, mature Christian women and couples to mentor you and provide wisdom for married life. Read books or take courses about biblical marriage roles, communication, conflict resolution, and intimacy. Develop skills like budgeting, cooking, and homemaking. Get involved in ministry together at church. Volunteer to assist families with young children to gain experience. Address any past emotional issues through Christian counseling so they don't impact your marriage. Discuss your desire for marriage and ask mentors to identify strengths and growth areas. Seek healing for any past relationship wounds. Make living out your faith your top priority. As you prepare your heart and life, you'll be ready when God brings your husband along in his perfect timing. What does the Bible mean when it says that Sarah called her husband Lord? In 1 Peter 3-5-6, Sarah is held up as a model of godly womanhood and submission to her husband. She called her husband Abraham Lord, showing proper respect for his authority and care over her. This reflects the biblical model of male leadership and female submission in marriage. Husbands are called to sacrificially love and lead their wives, while wives are called to lovingly affirm and respect their husband's leadership. But this doesn't justify abuse or domination. Instead, godly marriage reflects Christ's sacrificial love for the church. Wives calling husbands Lord shows esteem for their loving, servant-hearted leadership. It honors God's design for harmonious marriage roles. As you pray for your future husband, ask God to help you develop a submissive spirit that gladly affirms your husband's leadership. Pray for discernment so you can follow a leader like Jesus, full of truth, wisdom, and sacrificial love. God can use your gentle and quiet spirit to win your husband to Christ and model God's design for marriage. Continue seeking godly mentors as examples to follow of biblical marriage roles lived out beautifully. What kind of sacraments should I do to prepare my heart to become a wife? Preparing your heart as a future wife is important spiritual work God wants to do in you through His grace. Some key sacraments and spiritual disciplines to engage in our regular Mass and Eucharistic adoration to grow closer to Jesus. Receive the Sacrament of Reconciliation frequently to purify your motivations and keep short accounts with God regarding sin. Pray daily prayers like the Rosary and read Scripture, asking God to shape you into a woman of noble character. If you have the means, go on spiritual retreats for times of focused fellowship with the Lord. Additionally, receive wise biblical counsel from mentors, priests, or older women who can speak into your life. Consider participating in ministry, service, or Bible studies aimed at discipline young adult women. Above all, ask the Holy Spirit each day to align your heart with God's truth and recalibrate your desires around your relationship with Jesus. He is the ultimate spouse of every believing soul. As you seek intimacy with Him, you are preparing well for human marriage too. Continue praying for future husband, trusting the Lord to ready you spiritually. What does the Bible say about having children? The Bible presents children as a blessing from God and the natural result of marriage between a husband and wife. Genesis 1.28 reveals God's first command to be fruitful and increase in number through bearing children. Psalms 127-3 calls children a heritage from the Lord and a reward. Proverbs 17-6 describes children as a crown to grandparents. Jesus also affirmed the blessing of children when he welcomed them with open arms and scolded his disciples for trying to keep them away. At the same time, scripture doesn't command all couples to physically bear children. 1 Corinthians 7 notes that singleness can be good and free people to serve the Lord without distraction. 
protection. If you are unable to have children naturally, you can explore ethical options for adoption or foster care. As you pray for your future husband, ask God to bless your marriage with children according to His will. Seek wisdom from mentors, priests, and wise counselors regarding family planning. Most importantly, commit your desires to God in prayer and trust Him to direct your family's growth. Prayer is such an important aspect of growing in your faith. Also, meditating on the gospel for at least a few minutes a day can dramatically deepen your faith. Are you familiar with the gospel? I believe that you were brought to this video today for a reason. Let's take a moment to think about the gospel and what the religion of Christianity is all about. The Bible tells us that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and that we all need a savior because of this. Romans 3.23 Because of this, God sent his one and only son to us to be the atonement for our sins. As it says in John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You see, in Malachi 3-6 God says, I am the Lord, and I do not change. He has always required a blood sacrifice for the atonement of sins. He says this in Leviticus 17:11, For the life of a creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. He also repeats this in the New Testament when he says in Hebrews 9.22, Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. This is why Jesus, God in the flesh, had to come into the world and live under the law, which are the Ten Commandments, to redeem those who were under the law. Have you obeyed the entire law of the Lord? Have you ever stolen anything, even if it was small? Have you ever lied? Have you ever not kept Sunday as a day of rest and worship of the Lord? Have you ever looked with lust at another person that you were not married to or done physical things with a person you were not married to? To. Have you ever desired something that your friend or neighbor had that didn't belong to you? To be honest, it's easy to break these laws because our nature is inclined to sin. The Bible says that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. However, it says in 1 John 1-8 and 9, If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What a merciful and loving God we serve. Because God loves us so much, in Isaiah 53, 10, it says, Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush Jesus, when his soul makes an offering for guilt. Jesus was born of a virgin, died on the cross, and rose from the dead. He conquered sin and death, and because he rose from the dead, he promises to raise us from the dead after we die too. This is the glorious gospel. The next step after a person has received the gospel is to go to RCIA at your local Catholic church. You can search for the nearest church on Google and call them to see when the next classes start. If they don't start for some months, you can still meet with the director and get some books to read to tie you over before it starts. I will be praying for you about all of this. This is the road to eternal life. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our other videos about inspiring saints. I appreciate you taking the time to view this video. Make sure to check out the links below in the description so you can grab your We Are Saintly Catholic t-shirt and be a part of our We Are Saintly Catholic community by signing up for our email list and joining us on Patreon. I give you free saint printables each month, a free We Are Saintly shirt each year, shout outs, and more in Patreon as a special thank you for being a part of this amazing Catholic community. Are you considering taking a Catholic pill pilgrimage to focus your heart after learning about praying for future husband. I suggest cool Catholic pilgrimages in each of my blog posts on my blog and you can see my different videos on how to take a Catholic pilgrimage right here on my YouTube channel. I've traveled to lots of places and I'm well versed in the things you may need along the way so I've compiled a list of links in the description below where you can find cheap flights, car rentals, destination packages, and more. Save this video so you have those links handy and visit our blog to learn about more holy saints that will ignite your faith. I sincerely hope that learning about praying for future husband has brought you a sense of comfort and tranquility. If you found this video to be beneficial, please do not hesitate to give it a thumbs up, share it with others, and subscribe to our channel. Always remember to keep the faith and believe in the power of prayer. May God bless you and provide you with guidance on your journey. Until we meet again, take care of yourself, keep going to church, reading your Bible, praying your rosary, and sharing the gospel. I'm praying for you in all of this.